where we left off in the last video, we were beginning to try to figure out what the 24 roots of 1 were. And then we're going to square those 24 roots, take the absolute value of their imaginary part, and then sum them up. So let's once again, let's just think about the roots that matter. So this over here, we figured out this is pi over 12. So let me. This is pi over 12 as the angle, I guess I should say. That's e to the pi over 12i. Let me just focus on the angle here. This over here is 2 pi over 12, or pi over 6. This over here is 3 pi over 12, or pi over 4. This over here is 4 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, or pi over 3. And this right over here is 5 pi over 12. This right over here is 5 pi over 12. And then this obviously is 6 pi over 12 or pi over 2. We could keep going. But before we keep going, and this, is, this will really just simplify the math a little bit, remember, we're going to have to square these roots. So let's just think about if we have some complex number, a plus bi. If we have some complex number, a plus bi, let's think about what happens when we square it. This is going to be equal to a squared plus 2abi minus b squared. Or we could rewrite it as a squared minus b squared will be the real part. And then plus 2abi. 2ab is the imaginary part. And the reason why I even took the trouble of writing it this way is to realize that the comp what we're going to do is we're going to square all of these complex numbers and then take the absolute value of the imaginary part. So really, all that matters is the absolute value. All that matters is the absolute value of 2ab, or really 2 times the absolute value. 2 times the absolute value of AB. Now, these guys all have analogs where either A or B would be negative. So if this guy is, if this guy, this right over here is, let's call this A plus BI. If you had A minus BI, you would be down here. You would be down here. So if this guy is A plus BI, A minus BI is going to be over here. Or you could have negative A minus BI is going to be over here. Negative A minus BI is going to be over there. Or you could have negative A plus BI over here. Negative A plus BI over here. But the reason why I did this is we showed you just over here, all of these guys, when you square them and you take the absolute value of the imaginary part of that squared value, it's all going to be the same. Because when you take, it's going to be AB, absolute value is just going to be AB. Negative AB, absolute value is just still going to be AB. So they're all going to be the same. So what we can do is, and each of these guys are going to have the same analog. So what we could do is just find the values for these guys, 1, 2, 3, 4 for these five guys over here, and then just multiply whatever we get by 4, because they each have, I guess there, there's four of these around the unit circle, and that'll save a lot of our work. Now, the other thing we want to think about, we already said that we have to ignore 1, because we added that root. But even if we didn't remember to ignore it, it wouldn't matter, because 1, square, one doesn't have an imaginary part. 1 squared is still 1 does not have an imaginary part. We can also ignore, we can also ignore we can also ignore an angle of pi over 2, or 90 degrees, because this has no real part. And you see over here that when you square it, when you square it, it's actually going to take you over here, and it won't have any imaginary part. When you square it, it's 2 times the real times the imaginary part. This has no real part, so this is going to be 0. So this guy will also not contribute. So we really just care about these angles right over here. And then, and then we'll square them, find the absolute value of their imaginary parts, and then we'll multiply everything by four because that'll correspond to these other to their to what if you took the a the imaginary the real parts and made them negative, and it would take us all the way around the unit circle. So let's think about it a little bit. Let me just write these over here. So the z's, the z's that we'll think about right now are going to be e to the pi over e to the pi over twelve, e to the pi over e to the pi over six e to the pi over 4, oh, e to the pi over 12i, I should say, pi over 6i, pi over 4i, e to the pi over 3i, and then we have e to the e to the 5 pi over 12i, 5 pi over 12i. Now we're going to square each of them, and it's nice to leave it in this exponential form when you square it. It's much easier to square these values. If you square this, you're just essentially multiplying the exponent times 2. So this is going to be e to the pi over 6i. This will be e to the pi over 3i. We're just squaring them. So we're just taking the square of each of these values, each of these roots. 
So e to the pi over 3i. And then here you're going to have e to the e to the pi over 2i e to the pi over 2i. Then over here, you'll have e to the 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3i. And then finally, over here, you'll have e to the 5 pi, 5 pi over 6i. Now, these are the squared, of the, the squared values of these roots here. Now, let's just think about their imaginary parts. Let's just think about their imaginary parts. So this guy right over here can be rewritten. This guy can be rewritten here as cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine of pi over 6. So his imaginary part is sine of pi over 6. This guy's imaginary part, same as if you expand it out, Euler's identity, Euler's formula, cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine of pi over 3. So this imaginary part is just going to be sine of pi over 3. Here's going to be sine of pi over 2. Here's going to be sine of 2 pi over 3. And here's going to be sine of, here it is going to be sine of 5 pi. 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. Now we just have to evaluate these guys and take their absolute value. And then take the sum, and then multiply everything times 4. And we're essentially in the home stretch. So pi over 6, pi over 6 is 180, if we want to in degrees, and my brain has an easier time processing that. So actually, let me draw another unit circle over here, just so we can visualize these angles. So now we have sine of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is the same thing. Pi over 6 is the same thing as 30 degrees. So it looks like this. And we know that the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. This is 1, this is 1 half. This, the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. But this right over here is 1 half. Sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is the equivalent of 60 degrees. It is the equivalent of 60 degrees. The sine over here is square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. You can figure that out from 30, 60, 90 triangles. Then you have sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is that right over there. Well, the sine of that is, is, is just 1. So this is the imaginary, it's, if it's the imaginary part of this, or I guess this would be, this, essentially this evaluates just to i, but the imaginary part, which is viewed as the coefficient on the i, which is kind of non-intuitive. You would kind of think it's the whole thing. But when people say the imaginary part, so this will just be this will just be 1. And then sine of 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3, let's see, that is, so pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So you can view that as 120 degrees. So it's 120 degrees. So it's right over here. So it's going to have the same sine value. It's going to have the same sine value as pi over 3, as pi over 3. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. And then sine of 5 pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So this is sine of 150 degrees. So it's going to be just like that. And it's going to have the same sine value as pi over 6. So it's going to be 1 half. And lucky for us, these are all positive values. So let's just take the sum. So we have, we have 1 half plus 1 half is 1 plus another 1 over here is going to be 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 is square root of 3. Now remember, this was we just we just did it for this quadrant over here. We have to do it for all of the quadrants, so we just need to multiply. We just need to multiply everything times 4. So the sum of the absolute value of the imaginary part of the square of the square of the roots is 8 plus 4 square roots of 3. 8 plus 4 square roots of 3. And going back to the original problem, we got the answer here. This is 8 plus 4 square roots of 3. I don't want to make I want to make sure I didn't mess it up. Right. 8 plus 4 square roots of 3. So if you want to find m plus n plus p, it is 8 plus 4 plus 3, which is equal to 15. And we're done.